Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to continue uh, talking about the log. And uh, I'm actually on developer.android.com, which is a great uh, resource for developers to learn more about that Android development platform in general. There's all sorts of great information here, and I would highly recommend going through here and just looking at things, reading and just reading the docs. I mean, there's all sorts of great stuff, and you can usually find what you want as easy as you can. So what we want to go over here is that there's different types of error messages, and I did in fact fix that error message I was getting before, or that log spamming I was getting just by updating. So it's no longer there. In fact, if we go to the app that we were currently running before, and you'll notice as I click, you'll see our button clicked. And there's no sort of messages spamming down here or anything like that. So we should be all good to go. So we have different types of messages based on the different types of priority. So V verbose is the lowest priority. D debug is the second. And then info. And then we have warning, then error, fatal, and silent. Um, and so really, if you have a, a warning, maybe you can put this in your code. It shouldn't be getting to this spot or something. And if it is, it's doing something, you should output a warning. Um, and these warnings, uh, they're going to change how the log looks in the log message. So if we come here, and instead of using D, let's just say we use E. And for some reason, we didn't want this button click method to go here so this is going to be an error whenever this button is clicked it shouldn't actually get here so let's run our app okay and now I'm here and notice how every time I click it it's giving us red it's giving us errors and then we could filter and say only give me the errors and you'll notice here's our errors we have them all right in front of us and it's really easy to see when something went wrong if we put these error messages in here bright red in your face whatever so that's really cool. However, we talked about maybe uh, not having this main activity. Let's say if this activity name changed or we're in another activity, we wanted to drop this code in. We wanted this still to say the activity's name. So what's something we can do to automatically assign the main activity to a variable? Well, we can give this a variable. It can be public. And then, so this is going to be a public variable. You can use it all over the place. It's static and final because we're not going to change this. This is a static variable. It's not, it's only going to get set once at the beginning here, and that's it. And so we're going to say it's a string, and the name of the string is, well, in fact, if you remember when we were creating our log, if we typed log dot d and they called it a tag. So we're going to call this tag. And because this is a final, we'll do or a, a static. We're going to do all caps here. And it's going to be equal to. And then we're going to grab the main activity's name. So how we do that is we type main activity dot class dot get name. Sweet. Okay, so now it's getting the name, and it doesn't matter what the name is, it's just going to automatically set it to this tag. And now uh, come down here in our log, and we can just change this main activity to tag. And now let's again, I'm going to change this to W just so you can see a warning in action. I've saved this app, I'm going to rerun it. Now it reboots it in my emulator, and when I click on this, Actually, let's turn this filtering off. We'll just have it be verbose. And every time I guess it, I'm getting this warning button clicked. And it's orange. Perfect. Nice and easy to see. Uh, but most importantly, if we make this a little bit larger here, you can see that it's grabbing our tag as activity. So it's grabbing our main activity directly from our uh, directly from the activity itself and getting the name exactly what we wanted, and that's perfect. So this is how what we wanted to see. Um, we've tried different couple of error message or different types of logs, and now you can just drop logs in wherever you want. And instead of maybe if you wanted to test this, you know, your users got the number right. It's before you output on the screen or something, just so you can test that interaction. Uh, these are great, and then you don't have to have anything output to the user. And when you bundle uh, your app for production, 
these errors or these log messages aren't going to come along with it. So you don't have to worry about anyone seeing these uh, log messages ever, any of your end users. So I guess that's what's important. What you want to do is get used to using these log messages, but by all means, come to the docs here and just read over this. There's more valuable information in here than I can try to spout off in one of these videos. So check it out. Um, and if you have any questions, leave a comment. As always, hit us up on Twitter or Facebook. Let us know what you think. This is Scott with the Love Tuts, and thanks for watching.